If anybody asks you, what stands out about your God that puts him above every other God? All you need to say is, he owns everything because he created everything. And that should settle the discussion. Because if he created it, it belongs to him. Psalms 24. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the sea and established it upon the flood. Who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. That's who this God is. Beloved, we want to see if we can't get closer to this God. And I think I've found a way. But let's begin with the word of prayer. And then I'm going to ask you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 25. But let's pray first. Father, I want to come now, and as humble as I know how, I want to come and bow with the rest of creation with the 24 elders, the four living creatures, the myriads and myriads and thousands and thousands of angels and the spirit of men made perfect. And Father, and just worship you and love you and praise you. So Father, I just thank you. Father, we want to see how to get closer to you. Father, help us to get a good understanding and we will give you much praise and adoration and thanksgiving. So we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. This God, this God, where my mind is running to is, is David in Second Samuel chapter 7. David says, O Lord God, what am I that you are so mindful of me? And what are my people? And he goes on and on, but he says it several times. He says, O Lord God, O Lord God, there's some depth into that that we don't fully understand when he says, O Lord God. Well, it's because God was David's shepherd and every step of the way leading up to the kingdom or leading up to his throne, he saw God be his shepherd. And we ought to want God to be our shepherd. Look what it says about a shepherd. When you got this God, whoever want to ask you, who is this God? Let me tell you about this God. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over, surely. Goodness and mercy shall follow me 
all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That is what, that's the relationship you need to have with this God. That you allow him to be your God and you become his people. Well, the question is, how close can I get to this God? How close? And 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 it's it's tucked into a place that you'd never look to find. And that is in First Corinthians chapter eleven and verse twenty five. So le- let me read the one verse, but then I want to go back. I want to go back and read the whole thing in context. The one verse says, in the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Mm. Now let's go back and read the whole context. It begins in verse 23 of 1 Corinthians chapter 11. He says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now we're back to verse 25. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. That, <laughs> that's the crown of creation. That, that right there. He's been prepared for this. Hmm. Even during Adam and Eve's fall, uh, the first man, the first woman fell. Uh, And yet, even at that time, God was looking at what needed to happen. He quoted it in Genesis 3.15 about the seed of the woman bruising the head of the serpent and then the serpent bruising his heel. That whole thing there was about this cup, this cup, the new covenant. This cup is the new covenant. So we're going to have to do some research here to get down to this cup, this cup, and his blood. By the way, uh, Hebrews says, all things are cleansed with blood. Mm, And without the shedding of blood. Hmm. There's no forgiveness. All sins had to be atoned for. Your sin, my sin, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob's sin, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, all of us. In fact, this this cup is so often, it's going to reach back and touch on the fact that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were great men. But the only way that they're going to enjoy God for all of eternity is that their sins must be paid for, not covered. Yeah, you offer sacrifice and you can cover that, but uh, not taken away. John the Baptist said it well when he was down there baptizing in the journey and he saw Jesus walking along the shore. He said, Behold, the Lamb of God 
that take away sin. So, and that's what we needed. We needed our sins taken away altogether. So what? how can I get closer to him? It's always going to be found in a covenant. We cannot get close to God without a covenant. And you have to go all the way back to Genesis 12 and 2. And God is making a covenant with Abraham and Abraham's seed. Because God cannot deal with you outside of a covenant. And that's why this covenant that we're talking about now, we have to go back and look at it because this covenant uh, puts us in a good place. So uh, let's just look at the beginnings of this covenant. Now, there are many covenants, but I want to focus on three. That's Abrahamic covenant, the Mosaic covenant, and the new covenant. But let's look at this Abraham covenant first to get a running start. Genesis 12 and 2. He says to Abraham, Abraham, I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great. And so you shall be a blessing and I will bless those who bless you. The one who curse you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Beloved, that is a profound statement. In you, all the families are going to be blessed. Whether Jews, Gentiles, Greeks, Hebrews, all families was going to be blessed through him. Through him, through him, through him. And, and, and as we move further into this, that you're going to see that um, this Abraham covenant just began to set the stage. Did you notice in all of that it was unilateral? Uh, it, it didn't say a thing that Abraham had to do. It said what God was going to do. And that's the difference between law and grace. No man can be justified by the law. It's got to be by grace. So let me say it again uh, in verse 2. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make you make your name great so that you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. Whoever curse you, I will curse them. And in all and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now this is this is an awesome God because when you get down to this part here because the next one we're going to look at is the Mosaic Covenant but but right here Abraham Covenant sets the stage I mean it goes all the way over to the New Testament um, in Galatians when they talk about those that are Abraham's seed or in the covenant so we have a blessing, and so when Jesus says to us in the New Testament, this cup is the new covenant, you got to understand that that was an old covenant, but this is a new covenant. So, beloved, we will get to that, but, but for right now, let's just thank God that we are in the new covenant. How do you get in now? Just in case you can't join us next week, is by Romans 1 and 16. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power under salvation for everyone who believed to the Jew first and then to the Gentiles. Shall we pray? Father, once again, we, we need you. We need you. We come here no form, no fashion, no theatrics, no showmanship. Just mere children call on our Father. Father, help your people to get close to you. 
Help them to know how important the covenant is. Father, we're going to keep giving you praise and glory. We ask you things in Jesus' name. Amen.